We've been talking about what happens to an unstable nucleus. We've learned that it can shoot off an alpha particle and undergo alpha decay. In this lesson, we'll learn about another type of decay, beta decay. During beta decay, we also see that our element changes. But just what is a beta particle? Let's take a look. Well, here is our isotope notation for a beta particle. You'll notice this B looking letter that has a little tail. That is the Greek letter beta. Just like we use the Greek letter alpha for our alpha particle, we use the Greek letter beta for our beta particle. One strange thing you'll notice when you look at the beta particle is that it has a negative sign in front of what should be the atomic number. What's going on there? Well, we'll explain that as this video proceeds. For now, just notice it has a negative sign, which seems a little strange. Lastly, notice in the mass number slot, it has a zero. So that means there's nothing in the nucleus. In other words, there's no protons and there's no neutrons. Now, what a beta particle turns out to actually be is a high energy electron that leaves the nucleus. So it's actually just an electron. So that means just like we could say that the alpha particle was a helium nucleus, we can say that the beta particle is an electron. Those are the same thing. And what it does is it leaves an unstable nucleus. So here we have a nucleus, a bunch of protons and a bunch of neutrons, and it turns out to be unstable. Remember, all of our elements undergoing nuclear decay, like alpha decay or beta decay, are unstable. And that's why they undergo decay. It turns out to bring them to a more stable spot. And what this one is doing very specifically is shooting out an electron or a beta particle. That's strange. We don't expect electrons to just shoot out of nuclei. It only happens during beta decay. What's really going on here? Where does the electron come from? Because isn't the nucleus just made of protons and neutrons? Well, it is. But it turns out that when beta decay occurs, what's happening is that a neutron is decaying into a beta particle and leaving behind a proton. So here we have the blue sphere that represents a neutron. And what happens is that neutron hanging out in the nucleus turns out to be contributing to the nucleus being unstable. And so it decays, and here we see it shoot off the electron. And now, if you have something neutral and it shoots off something negatively charged, that leaves behind something positively charged, right? A neutral thing that loses a negative charge becomes positive. And so we're left behind with a proton, and then this electron exits the nucleus. So the proton stays in the nucleus, and the electron leaves. So a neutron decays into a beta particle and a proton. That's what happens during beta decay. Let's learn how to predict the products of a beta decay reaction. Here we have the element polonium. And our goal is to figure out what's left after polonium undergoes beta decay. Remember in our last video on alpha decay, we saw that there was this whole sequence of alpha decays that our element radium underwent. And eventually we got to polonium and we said, well, polonium actually undergoes beta decay, which we don't know how to do yet. So we're gonna take a look in a future video. That's now, that's happening right now. We're gonna look at what polonium becomes when it undergoes beta decay. So how do we do this? Well, just like in alpha decay, we're gonna begin by writing our decay products. In this case, it's a beta particle. So we know that this is undergoing beta decay and that we're gonna get out our beta particle, which again, uses the Greek letter beta and has a negative one there at the bottom. And then we're gonna add up the mass numbers and atomic numbers before and after. Okay, before we have 218 in our mass number, that's just the top number and there's only one thing, so no adding to do. And our atomic number is 84, all right. No problems there. After our mass number turns out to be zero and our atomic number is negative one, well, do remember that our beta particle is taking a neutron and making it a proton. So that negative one is gonna make our math work out so that you can see that the atomic number increases because a neutron becomes a proton. So that's gonna increase that bottom number. And we can follow the same steps mathematically that we did in the alpha decay, where we can say, okay, the next step is to subtract the after from the before to see what's left over. All right, let's do that. For our mass number, we have 218 minus zero. Pretty boring, just gives us 218. No problems there. Okay, the atomic number, a little more interesting. We start with 84, that's what we had before, and we subtract a negative one. Here's where the negative one comes in. This is why it makes it work out. Because when I subtract a negative number, remember what I'm gonna be doing is actually adding. So those two negatives combine, they cancel out, and they give me just a plus sign. 
So 84 minus a negative 1 is actually 85. Okay, that's interesting. So the element left over is 218 for the mass number and 85 for the atomic number. Now, let's think about why that makes sense. Remember, what happened is we had 218 protons and neutrons in the nucleus of polonium. One of those neutrons actually dropped down and became a proton. And so that's why we see that our atomic number went up one from 84 to 85. Our mass number doesn't change because the proton was simply exchanged for a neutron. So the mass number stays the same and our atomic number goes up one. And that's a good summary of what happens during beta decay. Doesn't change the mass number, atomic number goes up by one. Okay, the last step then is gonna be to look up our element on the periodic table by atomic number. We need to write down what elemental symbol we have now. It's element number 85 because remember, the atomic number defines an element. So let's look for element number 85. All right, it's right here. That's astatine. Astatine has the symbol AT. So when I go back to my reaction, I'm just gonna write AT next to 218, and that's my final reaction. So that's how you predict the products of beta decay. Let's do one more practice. Okay, here we have the uh, isotope carbon-14 undergoing beta decay. This is actually a really important decay that we're gonna get into in a future video because carbon-14, you might have heard of before, it's used for dating things, that is, telling how old they are. And the reason it can be used is because over time, carbon-14 decays. And so how much carbon-14 remains is a good indicator of how long that carbon-14 or that carbon material has been around. We'll talk about that in more detail in a future video. But how does this decay reaction work? Well, once again, okay, we're gonna go ahead and write the beta particle as a product, zero minus one beta. Now, we could do this one of two ways. We could go ahead and add up the mass and atomic number before and after. So let's do that. Mass number before is 14, and my atomic number before is six. And we know that after the reaction, because remember this arrow is always relating a before to an after. We underwent some change, and now after that change, our mass number, as we currently have it, is zero. So nothing, no protons or neutrons there. And our atomic number is represented by that negative one. Of course, you can't really have negative one protons, but what that's saying is that beta particle is going to increase our atomic number. And that's sort of the other way to do that, is we can just remember, oh, okay, that increases the atomic number, right? So if we remember that it increases the atomic number, we can say my mass number is going to stay the same at 14, and my atomic number is actually going to go up 1 to 7. And again, we could have done that with the subtraction method, where we would have said 14 minus 0 equals 14, so that would have been our mass number difference. And then we could have done the same thing for the atomic number, where we would have done a six minus a negative one, that is really six plus one to give us seven. So two sort of ways to think about that, the sort of longer math way, or just remembering, hey, beta particles are gonna increase your atomic number by one. Okay, now we need to look up what element that is, because we need to find element number seven, that's what's left over. Okay, what's element number seven? Element number seven, way up here, nitrogen. Okay, so that's what we gotta tack on. So we get, in our final nuclear reaction, carbon-14, undergoing beta decay, and leaving behind nitrogen. Okay, let's sum up. What did we find? Beta particles can be emitted by radioactive isotopes, that is, unstable nuclei. Beta particles are just high-energy electrons. When emitted, beta particles change a neutron into a proton. Or another way to put that is, a neutron undergoes a decay and becomes a proton and shoots out our beta particle. Okay, lastly, a good summary to remember how to predict what goes on in these reactions is that beta particles increase the atomic number by one. Hey, hey.